welcome to my channel. If you are new to this channel, I am Christine. I'm a certified holistic health coach. And in this platform, I share and post videos on healthy, nutritious foods and healthy cooking ideas. Many diseases and illnesses are caused by nutritional deficiencies or poor nutrition. You are what you eat. The health of your body depends on the nutrient content of the food you eat, how the food is prepared, and how much of the food nutrients your body is able to absorb. Food is medicine. Therefore, you should know the right nutrient-rich foods to add to your diet to heal your body or nourish your body. Some foods may worsen health conditions like triggering inflammation and even creating problems, worsening uh, different health conditions. But food also is medicine. There are good foods that can heal the body naturally and balance it so you can have good health. Therefore, having the right knowledge of the nutrient-rich food to eat is very, very important. Now, in today's video, I will share with you why you should use ghee, pure ghee, or the health benefits of ghee uh, instead of refined oils. I will also share with you how you can make your own ghee at home from unsalted butter. Ghee is the best healthy fat for your gut, your skin, and hair. It is made from butter. Ghee is a short chain fatty acid rich in vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin K too. Ghee is greater for those who have allergies to casein, protein in dairy, or lactose. When the butter is heated, casein and lactose is removed. Ghee is a superfood, great for cooking, because it holds a higher heat or a higher smoking point. That means you can cook at a higher temperature without transforming it into a harmful chemical. Coconut oil is also having a higher smoke point, which is about 350 degrees, but ghee is 450 degrees centigrade. So ghee is so good for cooking, sauteing, uh, baking, and even roasting. Ghee has numerous be health benefits. For example, it helps in healing intestinal issues such as gastrointestinal problems, gut disorders, esophagus, and colon. It also helps in healing a leaky gut by repairing the gut lining. Ghee also helps in reducing inflammation. That is great for heart health, joint health, and minimizing autoimmune diseases. Because of its richness in vitamin A, ghee is also great for our eye health. It is helpful for enhancing the health of our teeth, which requires high level of vitamin K2, and ghee is a rich source of it. It also helps to prevent osteoporosis, a disease that weakens bones. Ghee is helpful also in weight loss, because it helps you to burn belly fat. The refined oils are not good for our health because they have been oxidated, overprocessed, and they are high in omega-6, so they may cause inflammation. They are also not easily digestible. And then they also feed bad bacteria in the gut that may cause problems. Therefore, I strongly recommend you use ghee for cooking your food or you can also use butter if you are not sensitive to lactose or casein. To make pure ghee, you only need one ingredient. Just get a good quality butter. This one I'm using is Lupac. You can't use any good quality butter. It must not be expensive. And this is about 200 grams. 
and it will give us good amount of V. So just follow me step by step and see how I transform this butter into pure ghee. So first we begin by cutting the butter into cubes. I've already sliced the butter into cubes. Then now get a good saucepan or a good cooking pot that is heavier and turn on the flame, very low flame. With ghee, if you want it perfect, you must be patient. So just put very low fire and let the pan heat. Add the butter cubes to the heated pan and Keep stirring until all the butter is melted. Don't stop stirring. Continue stirring it until all the butter is evenly melted. The butter is evenly melted and now I will let it continue to cook on low flame until I start seeing bubbles forming on top. Now you can see the bubbles have started forming and you can hear that cracking sound. So let it continue cooking and, uh, until it is still. This cracking sound shows that the water in it is evaporating. So make sure you get it to the point where all the water from the butter has evaporated. The benefit of that is that it will stay longer on kitchen counter because no bacteria can form on it. All the water is gone and you only have pure ghee. So the cracking sound or the popping sound is still continuing so i will just let it cook slowly until it is now still you can also see the milk solid is forming at the top so when the milk solid some of them shall have set at the bottom and the ones on top have started browning a little then it is a sign your ghee is ready. Now all the cracking sound has stopped, an indication that it has reached the highest boiling point. And even the milk solid, some of them have already settled at the bottom. So I don't want it to let it burn. I will turn it off and take it out of the cooker to cool. Then we will just strain it and uh, ensure the milk solid have remained on the strainer and you have your pure as ghee. The ghee has cooled down for around five minutes and as you can see the milk solid have settled at the bottom and there are also some on top. So I will just strain it into a clean bottle so I can come up with that clear, clean, pure ghee. The ghee is ready and it's uh, having very pure, light yellowish color and uh, very nutritious having amazing health benefits. This ghee can stay on the kitchen counter for even up to eight months. As long as you use a clean spoon every time you scoop to use. And um, it can also last longer in the fridge for more than a year or so. One advantage of this kind of ghee, the homemade ghee, is that it is cost saving. Store-bought uh, ghee may be quite expensive. 
This one we use 200 grams of butter and now I have like 160 grams of ghee. And um, another thing about the ghee is that it really helps with the gut, especially healing gut disorders like uh, gut lining and um, a leaky gut. It helps a lot. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and we will try your own ghee at home. Kindly let me know in the comment section how you has turned out to be. Thanks once again for watching and if you are new to this channel, kindly like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. And remember to leave your notification button on so anytime I post a new video, YouTube will be able to notify you. See you next time and bye. kitchen. I am a certified holistic health coach and in this channel I post and share videos on healthy nutritious foods and healthy cooking ideas. Many diseases and infirmities and illnesses are caused by nutritional deficiencies in our bodies as well as certain kinds of foods we eat, especially the processed foods. They are packed with chemicals that are causing health problems to our bodies. Remember you are what you eat. What the health of your body depends on the nutrient content of the food you eat, how the food is prepared, and how much of the food nutrients your body is able to absorb. Always listen to your body. And this nutrient food we are sharing that are good for you whenever you eat them, you feel good, consider adding them to your diet. In this particular video, I will share with you a nutrient-rich, healthy millet flour bread without yeast. Why without yeast? Unless you can get gluten-free yeast. If you are sensitive to gluten, don't use yeast in your bakings. Gluten is an indigestible protein found in wheat, barley, rye, and oats. Oats has a form of gluten called gliadin. Gluten is difficult to digest. Therefore, it can cause bloating, irritation of your bowels, and block absorption of nutrients. Since it coats your villi, the finger-like organs in the intestines, Using absorption of foods. This is the reason I'm sharing this gluten free bread recipe that is nutritious and easy to digest. If you are already having a health condition, I strongly recommend you go for gluten free alternatives so your villa can heal and then you'll be able to absorb nutrients well to nourish your body and to heal your body naturally. 
The ingredients for this millet bread are uh, there is foxtail millet flour. It is a bit uh, lighter in color compared to the normal the red millet flour. But if you don't have the foxtail millet flour, you can use the normal millet flour or the ragi. If you are in Bahrain, this foxtail millet flour you can find it in Danamo. Another ingredient for this bread is a fresh homemade coconut oil, baking soda. This one is pink salt, pink Himalaya salt. You can use sea salt or normal salt. Then there is a jaggery powder. This is my sweetener. You can also use honey. I don't use processed sugar. This is an talk for another day. I will explain why. I don't use processed sugar in my recipes. Then there is also ground flax seeds. This is optional. I have here three eggs. I'll also use apple cider vinegar, the one with the mother. This is the one that is gluten free. Look for apple cider vinegar with the mother. Now just follow carefully whatever I'm doing until we come up with this yummy, nutritious, healthy millet flour bread. Measure one and a half cups of the foxtail millet flour. We are starting with the dry green ingredients. Then uh, we need uh, one teaspoon of baking soda. One teaspoon of pink Himalaya salt or any salt of your choice. Two tablespoons of jaggery powder. This is our sweetener. And I need two tablespoons of black seeds powder. This is optional. If you have it well and good, if you can't get it, the bread will be still delicious. Now we mix the dry ingredients together. Let's mix them well. Set aside the dry ingredients. Now I will work on the wet ingredients. I'll use three eggs. Now separate the egg white from the egg yolk in different bowls. Add the fresh homemade coconut oil to the egg yolk. This recipe is dairy free. If you are sensitive to dairy products, then you use the fresh homemade coconut oil. If you are not sensitive to dairy, use butter. Add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar.
mix them together. Add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients and mix well. Add one cup of water or a cup of milk, but in this recipe I'm making dairy free millet bread, so I will use water instead of milk. Mix with the hand mixture or this hand whisker. I will use the hand mixer. In this part, I will use the hand mixture. The hand mixture is helpful in binding the flour together easily, since it is a gluten-free flour. Now it's time to preheat the oven. Whisk the egg white until fluffy. Finally, add the egg white that is fluffy and mix well. The millet bread dough is ready. Now it's the time to grease the baking tray. I've also laid the parchment pepper in the baking tray. Now let's add the dough. Put the dough in the oven to bake at 160 degrees centigrade for 45 minutes. The bread is ready and we keep it outside here to cool. We will leave the bread here to cool for some time, maybe 30 minutes, and then we'll come back to slice it. Wow, see, very delicious and healthy and soft and easy to digest. Thanks for watching. I believe you are going to try this gluten-free millet yummy bread. Kindly subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time. Bye for now. Stay healthy.
welcome back to Christine's Kitchen. If you are new to this channel, my name is Christine. I am a certified holistic health coach. And in this channel, I share and post videos on healthy, nutritious foods and healthy cooking ideas that when followed are proven to correct nutritional deficiencies and even reverse health conditions. Many diseases and infirmities are caused by nutritional deficiencies. Therefore, having the right knowledge of the right nutrient rich foods that you can eat to nourish your body is important. Remember the health of your body depends on the nutrient content of the food you eat, how the food is prepared, and how much of the food nutrients your body is able to absorb. You are what you eat. Give your body the right nutrients and it will give you health. In this episode, I will share a very nutrient-rich fish called tuna that you need to consider adding or being a part of your diet. If you are suffering from health conditions such as high blood pressure, rheumatoid or osteoarthritis, tingling and numbness in your legs and feet, and diabetes type 2, you need to consider adding tuna to your diet because of its amazing health benefits. Tuna fish contains minerals, vitamins, proteins, antioxidants, and organic compounds. It is loaded with minerals such as selenium, phosphorus, iron, magnesium, calcium, and potassium. Tuna fish is also a rich source of vitamin B12, vitamin B6, riboflavin, and niacin. Tuna fish has significant health benefits. Tuna fish helps to improve brain health. Making tuna a part of your regular diet will help prevent cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. This is because of the omega-3 fatty acids that prevents inflammation and promotes blood supply to the brain. Tuna fish aids also in weight loss because it is low in calories but rich in proteins and other nutrients. Tuna is also a strong antioxidant. Therefore, it helps remove or neutralize free radicals from your body. Free radicals are toxins your body comes into contact with. Tuna fish also promotes eye health. Tuna is rich in vitamin A, which prevents vision-related conditions, such as night blindness and muscular degeneration. It can also help in vision improvement. Tuna fish is helpful also in reducing blood pressure. The anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acids can help reduce blood pressure. Potassium found in tuna is a strong dilator and helps in reducing blood pressure as well. In order to enjoy these amazing health benefits of tuna, I recommend fresh tuna fish over the canned one. This is a fresh tuna fish. We are going to slice it into smaller pieces and marinate. The tuna fish are already sliced into smaller pieces and washed. The next thing to do, add salt, shake it well, and cover with a lid for 10 minutes. Now I'm adding other ingredients for marination. I'll add half teaspoon of turmeric powder, one teaspoon of garam masala,
then some lime juice or lemon juice then ginger and garlic paste now mix everything well carefully with your hands and keep in the fridge for one hour to marinate well the tuna fish has marinated for the last one hour ready to cook I will use simple ingredients I have uh, chopped garlic chopped ginger I have garam masala onion powder the sauce chopped carrots you can use tomatoes but make sure you remove the seeds and the tomato cover since um, tomato is high also in proteins called plant proteins called lectins and these lectins is more concentrated around the seed area lectins are natural plant defensive mechanism that uh, help the, the plants to protect their seeds from being eaten by predators now I'm using carrots because uh, I experience inflammation when I use tomatoes so this is my alternative for tomatoes if you have no issues with tomatoes you can use tomatoes and I have chopped onions I also have here chopped coriander leaves and a cup of coconut milk I'll use this grinder to make a nice paste of carrots onions garlic and ginger so I'll grind them together the paste is ready the onion carrots ginger garlic paste add it to the cooking pot and let it cook for three to five minutes under low flame you need to cover it to cook quickly the paste has started bubbling now it's time to add Yara masala and onion powder mixed well add one cup of water to the paste and cover it to cook for two minutes it is now time to add fish the tuna fish and uh, cover it let it cook for 20 minutes on low fire let us see how it this delicious tuna curry will turn out The tuna fish curry is almost cooked. Last but not least, add the cup of coconut milk and let it cook for another five minutes. The tuna curry is cooked and ready. Finally, add uh, chopped coriander leaves for extra flavor. 
and then mix well leave it for like a minute it is all done and the taste is good delicious it's simple no oil natural ingredients natural spices very healthy i hope you are going to start eating tuna if you haven't been eating tuna go try it thanks for watching subscribe and be free to share and give your comment as well let me know how it goes with this recipe see you in our next video My name is Christine, a certified holistic health coach and in this channel I share healthy nutritious foods and healthy cooking ideas that are proven to correct nutritional deficiencies and even reverse health conditions. Many diseases and infirmities are caused by nutritional deficiencies in our bodies. Therefore, having the right knowledge on the right nutrient rich foods to eat or to add to your diet is important. Remember you are what you eat. Give your body the right nutrients it needs and it will give you health. However, in the process of preparing some of the nutrient rich foods, we usually destroy their nutrient content without knowing. Therefore, I'm also sharing healthy cooking ideas that ensures the nutrients of the food prepared are retained. These people react differently to foods. I recommend that you listen to your body always. And the foods that are good for you, when you eat them, you feel good. Consider adding them to diet. That's why I'm sharing a variety of nutrient-rich foods that you can choose from. In this video, I will share a very nutrient-rich natural superfood called Moringa, Oleifera, or drumstick leaves, or it's also called a miracle tree. Moringa is a drought resistant tree that grows in many parts of the world like in India, Pakistan, Philippines, Mexico and West Africa. Moringa leaves have been used as a natural multivitamin supplement around the world for many years. This is because Moringa leaves has numerous antioxidants and over 92 nutrients making it the most powerful superfood. Moringa leaves are also being used to cure mal malnutrition in India and most parts of African countries. Moringa leaves are packed with vitamins and minerals in higher quantity than even other foods. For example, it contains twice of proteins than that of yogurt. 
four times of vitamin A than that of carrots, three times of potassium than banana. It also contains four times of calcium than milk and seven times vitamin C than orange. Moringa leaves are also higher in proteins than other leafy green vegetables or legumes. Moringa is rich in folate, folic acid. They are also packed with vitamins such as vitamin B1, vitamin B6, vitamin E, vitamin K, selenium, and vitamin D. Moringa leaves therefore has numerous health benefits. Therefore it has been used as traditional medicine for many years in many parts of the world. I therefore strongly recommend that you consider Moringa being a part of your daily diet. Moringa can cure so many diseases and even uh, prevent nutritional deficiencies. Now, let me tell you some of the beneficial aspects of Moringa leaves. Moringa fights inflammation. It reduces inflammation by suppressing inflammatory enzymes and proteins in the body. Therefore, it is excellent for those who are suffering from arthritis or joint pains of any kind, of inflammation of any form. Moringa leaves also helps to improve thyroid health. It controls hormones related to energy, sleep and digestion. Moringa fights free radicals created by pollution, exposure to the sun, uh, and other toxins that get their way into your cells. Moringa leaves also helps in treating diabetes. It helps to reduce the amount of glucose in the blood as well as sugar proteins in the urine. Moringa also keeps your bones healthy and strong and is vital for treating osteoporosis since it is so rich in calcium and phosphorus. Moringa can be used for treating some stomach disorders such as constipation. The antibacterial and antibiotic properties of Moringa may help to inhibit growth of pathogens. Moringa leaves can be consumed in different ways. It can be powdered and turned into capsules. It, the powder can be used for making smoothies, tea, it can be used for uh, making salads, and uh, even sprinkling in your soups. The leaves can also be eaten raw or cooked. Let me share with you how to make your own Moringa powder at home. The reason I prefer the powder is that I can use it uh, for a longer period once it is stored in a clean glass jar, airtight, it can stay for so long. So even when the tree is not uh, in season, the leaves are not green, I still have my Moringa powder and I can use it in different recipe. Now get some fresh Moringa leaves. If you are here in Bahrain, you can get these leaves from Carrefour in grocery section or Central Market or Danamo. Now wash the leaves properly.
love to use moringa powder because it tastes nice in so many recipes and even in smoothies. Compared to fresh leaves that are a bit bitter, it's much easier to consume the powder than the leaves that are fresh. The leaves are already washed and clean. Now just tie a bunch with some rubber bands. Hang them to dry under a shade. Moringa leaves should be air dried to ensure that all the nutrients are not interfered with and uh, they are also the green part, the chlorophyll in it is not affected. So air dry them under a shade or if you, you have a car garage you can hang them under that shade so that they can dry without a strong sunlight heat. So I will leave them here to dry for three to four days or five days depending on the weather outside. It is four days later and the leaves are already dry. I can tell they are dry because they are crispy. You can hear the sound they make. Now the reason I prefer this traditional way of drying the moringa leaves under the shade this is called air drying it's because all the nutrient content of the leaves remains intact as well as the chlorophyll in the leaves wow the leaves are dried so nicely now it's the time to separate the leaves from the twigs so this is the way to do it The moringa leaves are ready to be powdered. Now you can use a grinder like this one. You can also use uh, this one to pound the leaves into powder. Or you can use a blender. So today I will put some leaves here in the grinder and powder the moringa leaves. Still having some more leaves to be powdered. The moringa powder is ready, and uh, the advantage of powdering the moringa leaves is that it can stay longer. This one can last up to one year, and therefore, you'll be able to use it in your diet or add it to your meals every single day. I'm transferring it into this container for storage. Make sure you store it in a cool dry place so it can last longer. This moringa powder can be consumed in different ways. You can make capsules with this powder. 
or you can make delicious dishes with the powder you can make smoothies you can also make tea or you can sprinkle it in salads so you are still getting your natural multivitamin supplement now let me show you also how to incorporate this multivitamin natural multivitamin called moringa into your meals so you can enjoy the maximum health benefits moringa leaves powder is uh, good because the bitter taste has been eliminated but if you are using fresh moringa it's a bit bitter but i will also share with you a recipe on how to reduce or eliminate the bitterness and uh, incorporate it in your meals now let me sh share with you how to use this powder and um, enjoy its health benefit with the mixed fruit salad so we will need fresh yogurt moringa powder chopped uh, apples i have chopped apples here chopped pineapples chopped mangoes and pomegranates now let us just mix the fruits together mix well then add fresh yogurt mix again everything Finally, take a tablespoon of moringa powder. You can use a teaspoon based on the quantity of the fruit salad you are making. Since uh, this one is a bit plenty, I'll use a tablespoon of moringa powder and sprinkle into our fruit salad. Mix well. The fruit salad is ready together with moringa powder incorporated and the taste is great there's no bitter taste or any different taste it has not altered the taste of this fruit salad at all so this is one way to make sure you are adding moringa powder into your meals or family meals for the health benefits the amazing health benefits of this amazing tree yeah it's beautiful and yummy mm. the taste is excellent i will also show you how to make fresh moringa leaves sauce or chutney and add it your family meals. Moringa has a bitter taste and therefore making it this way will help eliminate the bitter taste so that even the kids can enjoy it. Chutney or sauce is just a mixture of vegetables, fruits, spices, herbs and salt. 
So into my blender, I will add grated coconut, fresh coconut. I'll also add chopped ginger and fresh moringa leaves. I also had some fresh moringa leaves. I've already washed thoroughly. Then a pinch of salt, pink Himalaya salt. I'll also add a cup of water to ensure it blends properly, all the ingredients blends properly. Then uh, I will blend it to very, very fine paste. I'm ready here with the ground moringa masala or sauce or chutney and I want to use this to add it to rice so it can be enjoyed by the whole family. Now I need to heat just a spoon of ghee. Then add some chopped onions. <laughs> Make sure it is very low flame. Add some chopped garlic. Now I will add about two and a half cups of rice. And mix well. Add some moringa sauce or chutney. And mix with the rice. Finally, I will add some two or three spoons of fresh pomegranate seeds to add taste, that crunchy sweet taste, as well as making it more nutritious. And uh, the fire is very, very low. I don't want to lose the nutrients in the moringa, so I keep it as low as possible. And also, just for a few minutes, as long as, as soon as the Right, the steam is um, already making the rice a little bit hot. That's enough. The rice with moringa sauce is ready and very delicious. And the bitter taste is no longer there. So this is another way of incorporating moringa and enjoy the full benefits i recommend the powder or using it fresh because cooking it may in, uh, destroy some nutrients now let's serve it i believe you've enjoyed this video and uh, you are going to try this recipe moringa leaves should be added into your diet this is my recommendation because it will help correct many nutritional deficiencies and it will also give you amazing health benefits boost your immunity and the like so kindly comment like 
share and subscribe to my channel so you will be notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.